Turn to Genesis chapter 2, and um, we're making a little bridge here in this class. The last, I think, four classes we dealt with um, reconciliation. Next, we're going to deal with redemption as far as um, how that relates to kind. Um, but um, what I want to do is a little bridge in between before we get into the redemption thing. And I want to expand a little bit on this thing of kind. Um, and in Genesis chapter 2, before we read that, it just rolls off of my tongue. I just want to say hi to Matt and Heather, Tony and Heather. <laughs> and also to Steve Warnock, who's in Finland right now, and it's got to be early, two or three in the morning. Good to have you, Steve. Carolyn, Scott's mom. 3 a.m., oh my goodness. Uh, Steve, you better not fall asleep in class. <laughs> um, Carolyn, and we are going, to, since we have a Carolyn here, when we say Carolyn on Skype, we will uh, very soon refrain from saying Carolyn, Scott's mom, and we will say Carolyn, Carolyn. <laughs> okay? And then, of course, Sharon. Good to have all of you guys with us. <clears throat> all right, we're in Genesis chapter 2, and we really, the Lord is dealing with us on this situation of, of kind. He, um, in the last four classes, he's really, really borne down on the subject, and to, <clears throat> uh, and, and I've had the Spirit of God just uh, quickening to me this thing of not um, wanting to, um, not wanting to study doctrines or uh, attributes, but to find out how these things are life, not how they work, but how they're life, because they work uh, as we partake of Christ, as we become participants participants in the life of Christ. And um, I mean, if you're like me, I mean, haven't you ever wondered, you'd see somebody and they seem really saved, you know, and they're doing so good, and then they just fall away. And when they fall away, they just do it in a big way. You know, they bust hell wide open. You're just going, oh, moly, that's horrible. And um, <clears throat> you know, when it's, when it's Christ, um, when he is the reality of that thing, and therefore he is the reality of who you are, you know, I'll, I'll put it real simply, who you are as a saved person, <clears throat> meaning that you're not just a saved person, but you are now joined with him, known by him, and supposed to know yourself by him, by Christ. Hallelujah. I mean, is there, you know, Hebrews talks about so great salvation. Now, that's great salvation. That's more than just you're saved. You know, this is, this is great salvation. All right. And so, um, verse Genesis 2, 15 Let's start at 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thou shalt surely die. All right. So we, we've seen in the past and in our classes we, we have chart drawn on the board. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that I'm pointing at here. And... It's got all this fruit on it, but if you'll notice, I put on the board knowledge of and good out beside it, a circle, um, 
and um, evil representing a square. And we notice that this tree is, not, is both good and evil. It, it represents both of those realities. And then there's another kind of tree. So this is one kind. And there's another kind of tree, and we call it the tree of life. And basically, the, the trunk of it I drew as a cross and put life in the middle of it because the reality of what God had in mind from the very beginning <clears throat> was wrapped up in these two trees, and, and particularly of the tree of life. There's, there is no example or thought or anything given that, uh, of any other tree in there. There are many trees in there. God makes that absolutely clear. There are many trees. But he only really, really, really focuses in on two. And, and in one sense, he focuses in on one by identifying the tree of life and saying, okay, now Adam and Eve had life when God created them. But the tree of life is speaking of another kind of life, a higher kind of life. It speaks of the life of Christ, which Adam and Eve never had. They weren't born again. They didn't have the life of Christ, you know. So it was, speak, it was, it was to address a higher form of life that they could partake of, that they could put within themselves, you know, partaking of. And they had that option right from the very beginning. But God said, don't eat of this tree right here, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he did that. I mean, there's several different angles you can come from that. You can, you can, uh, you can stick, you know, for lack of a better way of doing it, we'll just put this atom right here and we can, we can say, but this man right here, this stick figure representing Adam, he disobeyed God, okay? And, and that was the big deal, okay? All right. Good, and yet the repercussions are greater than the act. All right, so let's, let's, but let's develop that a little more, okay? You could say he sinned. But God said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't, you know, I mean, you know, we know the Bible doesn't tell you what kind of fruit that was. You know, most people draw it as an apple or whatever, you know. And, uh, but, <laughs> so where do we get an apple a day? Keeps the doctor away. Anyway, that's, <clears throat> anyway, so we say he sinned by eating of that, and yet, I, you know, again, my weird mind, but what if it was crackers? And God said, don't eat those crackers. Okay, well, you still had disobedience, <clears throat> but it helps you to see that the actual deed done is not what, uh, what the, the Catholic, Catholics would probably call mortal sin. A mortal sin. No, not a mortal sin. Don't eat crackers. I'm just trying to help you see through some of this stuff. I mean, we're, you know, we go, sin is so horrible and everything. And, and now when we think of sin, it's usually mortal sins. But the original sin, and that's what it's called, original sin. That's, that's the, the common theological terminology for people who begin to talk about the fall of Adam that brought the fall of the whole human race. R original sin. <clears throat> well, when they speak of that, they're talking about a nature now, but that's really the, the, the results of original sin, isn't it? That everybody would have that fallen nature. That's the result of the original sin. So, so I'm trying to say, just eating well, you know, again, just eating crackers was not so horrible. Just eating fruit was not that horrible. Yes, there was disobedience, but it appears, and this is one of the things we're going to get into in the next couple of classes, but it appears that the real devastating thing that happened was, number one, in eating that tree, they became partakers of it, 
and they became of another kind than what God was. They were a completely different kind than him. We say they sinned, but they also became sin in nature. Sins is the fruit, sin being the nature. Okay, they, they, they became sinners, but they became more than sinners. They became not God's kind. That's more than just being a sinner, you know. That is completely not what God is. And when God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness, that went completely opposite of what God had in mind for man in, in the original creation. All right. But there's something else. I mean, they changed kind. But that can be sort of ethereal, sort of fuzzy. We say they changed kind and they became sinners or they, they sinned. But one of the things that I think most people leave out of this equation, even if they understand it like in the story, they don't, they do not apply this theologically or practically in their walk, it's not something most Christians are even conscious of, and that is they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That what they took in them, the kind they became, was a kind that was opposite of God, therefore sin, therefore, because they, you know, you do know the word sin is from the, the at least in the Greek, is, is miss the mark. Sin is missing the mark. Okay, well, you know, here was the mark over here, the tree of life. Here's the kind that God is and wants us to, to grow into. But instead, it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All right, so now, tr you know, try to, uh, try to catch this with me. When we examine these things, all we see is that man sinned. Okay, well, you sinned, so you did wrong. So you were disobedient. Okay, well, good. That's yes, yes, yes. But, the, but there's a hidden thing that is within us that most people never address, the knowledge of good and evil on one tree after one kind, having both. You hardly ever hear, I mean, am I right? You hardly ever hear anybody address that, and yet that was the original sin. That was the, the thing God said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge. He didn't say don't sin. He didn't say don't be disobedient. All of the things that we, we, we lift up, we make such a big deal, God says don't eat of that particular tree. I don't want that in you. <laughs> okay? It's, and, you know, of course, as I usually do, I try to break our moorings from, from doctrines and theology and teachings and things like that to at least break us loose from that long enough to say, Lord, there is something here that we've never addressed, that we that we want you to address, not just in Randy's teaching or in, in classes or whatever. Explain this from your perspective. Give us your heart, give us your viewpoint. Don't let us just wander around and, and say, okay, well, you know, draw a little disobedience here or well, man sinned and God doesn't like sin. That misses the mark. <laughs> that kind of thinking misses the mark. In, the, in this sense, I mean, just try to follow this. In this sense, if we change kind, if we were really made in his image and then we change kind, and that, and as I said, we'll, we'll eventually get into a bunch of scriptures to help us really, really see this, then remember Adam and Eve, there, Adam, there was no Eve and God said, it is not, in fact, that was the very next verse of, uh, if we'd have kept reading, 
right now. It is not good for man to be alone. He doesn't have one after his kind. And yet, when Adam and Eve sinned, he, did, he no longer had one after his kind. He brought us into his kind. Then he brought one after that same kind to Adam. And they sinned against God in that they left him his kind okay that's to God that's that's a problem okay that's a problem and all of the sins is just the fruit of that problem you know you can say whatever God does is not sin can you agree with that whatever God does is not sin whatever we do is because it's out from another kind Oh, did you really catch the hat? There's something to that. That whatever we do is because it, it's sin to God because it's not after his kind. It has wrong motives. It has wrong thinking. It considers things by a completely different mindset than God does. Do you remember him saying in one place, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Well, you know, we can go, here's how we usually think of that. Okay, I'm an ant, and he's a big human being, and I don't think like God, and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't think like me. You understand what I'm saying? We go, well, he's God, and I'm this little creature. So we go, well, his ways are just, you know, not my ways, and my ways are not his ways. Well, that's a nice, innocent way to get out of it. That's right. It's, yeah, like, like he's got the big picture and we only see a little bit of it. No, no. We think by the knowledge of good and evil, and he thinks according to, shall we just slip it in there and then move on, but 1 Corinthians chapter 1, um, the wisdom of God is, is based on the cross, Christ crucified. And it's foolishness to man's wisdom. But man's wisdom is foolishness to God. Amen. That knowledge right there is foolishness. Okay? All right. So, um, so you have the, the change of kind <clears throat> and God is going to set about not just to stop men from sinning. Now, yes, that's it. That will, don't you agree that if we become after his kind and the way we, we end up doing that is by taking on his nature? Don't you agree that by becoming his kind or Christ being formed in you or be partakers of the divine nature, that would cut, cut down on sin? <laughs> okay. So, but that's, that's actually an automatic of changing kind, isn't it? It's not, it's not the thing that you should try to fix. You know, it's like, again, you know, the, the, you, to turn on the light, you go over here and you flip a switch and the light comes on. But if it's dark in here and you go, well, why isn't the light coming on? We need light so we can see. So you're more interested not in the thing that will bring it about, but just the result of it. So you get up there and you start messing with stuff and pulling wires and stuff and end up electrocuting yourself and stuff like that because you're totally going at it a different way. And the very thing that most people emphasize will come about automatically if reconciliation and redemption and these other truths that we talk about become the result of a change of kind. Christ in you, he said, is the hope of glory. Not you stop sinning, that's my hope. He said Christ in you. That's, that's his hope. Because why? Reconciliation then. Redemption. From what? From being the other kind. Make sense? All right. So, um, uh, you know, from the chart we can see that the knowledge of good and evil or the kind that we came, became, <clears throat> doesn't just consist of evil. 
that good, and this is going to be my point, at least this class, maybe the next two, that good, when out from this fallen kind over here and not God or God's kind, good is just as wrong as evil. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that. And we'll, we'll get into some scriptures and, do, and, and show you that, you know. But we have to set the table, which usually, you know, stirs people up. And, you know, many a time I've had people really going like this at me, and then we get into it, and they go, oh, you know, there it is. So, <clears throat> however, as usual, don't believe anything I say. You stay before the Lord. You get into the Word. You check out what I'm saying. If it's not true, don't you believe it for a minute. And I mean that. I'm not joking. I don't, I don't want to believe it if it's not the Lord, if it's not the truth. <clears throat> All right. So one of my statements, therefore, we must remember that the issue with God is not that this fallen kind no longer has any good in it. Because it has good. It's not that it doesn't have any good in it, but that whatever it displays, either of good or evil, does not matter to him. And we'll, we'll look at that in just a minute, too, with a scripture. <clears throat> um, the basic view of most Christians that I'm familiar with is <clears throat> that we were bad, but now we're good. We were bad as sinners, but now we're good. Well, you know, the scriptures tell us we were dead, but now we're alive. That old kind died, and we're brought into a new. Okay? Well, how many of you go, I was dead, you know, but now I'm alive? I mean, in a real sense, you know, they'll sing it in a song or something like that. But I mean, that really comprehend, you know, the kind that I was is dead, and now I'm of another kind. You don't hear that, are you? I go, I, I used to be bad. And the best testimony, oh, yeah, the best testimonies given in church are those people that were really rank and did terrible things. And they get up and they say, I just want to tell you, man, I was terrible. I was, I was doing drugs and I was doing all this horrible stuff and Jesus saved me. And everybody goes, yay. See, it's, their story is about good and evil. What if they never really changed trees? I'm not saying they did or didn't, but I'm just saying, what if? And I would say, if they didn't, oh my God. What the heck are you saying? Sit down and get Jesus. You know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be critical with any of that. I just want us to, to really, when I say come to Jesus, I mean, let's, let's come to him and become absorbed into his being and let his life come through. I, if I'm just a hand, let his life come through me. That's another kind. Hallelujah. And then anything that happens, all glory goes to him. But the other way, well, I was bad, but now I'm good. Oh, you are a good person. Jesus said there's none good but God. Not, not in his definition of good. And we'll, again, we'll see all of that. In our definition we stay away from the evil on that tree. But we really do go after all the good. See, I'm just saying, if we do that, and if we do that, we assume that that's Christianity. Yeah, we haven't even started. The, can anybody see how maybe the cross really is the beginning of a whole new thing? Carolyn. Yes, that's, that's a very good point, and don't go too far there, because I'm, I'm going to be preaching that. But that's, but I mean, we got it right here. Really, his good is life. That's, I mean, you know, let me just acknowledge that. That's a, that's a great statement, um, because we're going to have to discover that all of the things that we're trying to become, he is. Woo, that's liberating when you really find it out. Kelly, did you have a, a thought or comment? I was just saying that because 
You were just saying yes to the cross? Yes. Praise God. It's, that's good. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's, all right. Let's go to Isaiah, the first chapter. <clears throat> we'll just have a little look, see some of this. And there's so many good places in the New Testament to deal with this, but where is the, I mean, that, that, those to me are obvious. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. Now, this is the Lord, and he's a little upset. All right. <clears throat> the ox knoweth, this, this is Isaiah 1, 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. All right, what's the, what's the issue just in that verse. The issue is the people of God don't know God. How can that be? How can that be? I'll tell you what he's talking about. The immediate thing he's going to get into is the kind that they have been coming out from is not his kind. So they don't so you could say they, they, they have met God. Can you agree with that? Like they, they, like the, they went to a mall and they met him. And said, oh, you know, and I believe in you and left. You know, the mall and said, I believe in him. You know, I, I do. But they don't know his kind. And so what? They continue in this fallen kind, this knowledge of good and evil. Did I see a hand somewhere a while ago? No. Okay. Verse 4. Uh, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. Didn't say evildoers, did he? He said a seed of evildoers. Uh, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. What is the problem? They've forsaken the, ki the right kind that they are. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone away backward. Okay? Why should ye be stricken anymore? Meaning, you know, try to correct you. You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. Okay, he's talking about the body, the whole, the whole body. He's saying all of it. It's a corrupt thing in itself. It is not my kind. He's not just saying, you're bad. He says, you don't even know me. That's what he starts with. He's going, you don't even know me. You don't know what kind you're of, so you're acting like this other thing and thinking that's okay and probably doing a lot of good in the mix. And we'll see that we do. We do. We do. Because it's part of that tree. It's all there. All right? Um, <clears throat> verse, uh, the whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. Verse 6. From the sole of the feet even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. All right. So he is declaring all of Israel not of his kind. He is saying he, what he's doing, what God is doing here, is he's saying, you don't know me of whom you claim me. So I'm going to tell you how I see you. Not how you see you, but how I see you. Boy, this stuff about putrefying sores and stuff, I mean, that's, that's like, you know. I mean, I've, I've said before in many classes before you guys is... Uh, you know, what if God just, you know, manifested what each one of us were spiritually right now? I mean, what if he just did that? And, and then I would say something like, let, let me just ask the Lord if he'll do that right now. And they'd go, no! <laughs> you know. um, the problem is, however much we don't want him to do that, because of what we know, there's still a lot that we don't know. Okay. However... We also, if you're born again, there's a whole side of him clearly we don't know then. Of what we really are. Of what the cross really did. 
And so we wander around as in the daytime, as not, like it's nighttime, and we, we, uh, we don't know his mind because we don't know his heart, because we don't know his kind, because we don't know his being, we don't know his essence, we know what he's done for us, and we testify to what he's done. But, but there can be a rich man in town do good stuff for you, and he could be evil through and through. And still give you money, you know. I mean, and I don't mean anything bad by this. My stepfather, and he, I ended up before he died, leading him to the Lord. But I mean, he would have his good moments, and man, he would just be sweet. He would do stuff for you, you know. I mean, he would just, you know, do real, and you just go, wow, this this guy's a really great guy, you know. Um, uh, I remember one time my older brother and me, he's, my older brother's just a year older than me, and my younger brother a couple of years younger than me, <clears throat> and we had a horrendous, horrendous Saturday, Saturday, and then all through the night, just drunken rage and beating and horrible stuff going, screaming and tearing everything up and breaking everything and just nightmarish and um, so these little boys because we were pretty little <clears throat> there used to be uh, what went around in Dallas we were in Oak Cliff what went around was this truck called the Manor Man and what he did was he would actually go through the neighborhood and, and you could uh, catch him and buy stuff from him right then and there and he had cakes and all sorts of stuff and so guess what that Sunday was Father's Day so these three little boys, we ran out with all of our money, and we grabbed, uh, we got a, a Father's Day cake for him, even though the night before was just like a horror movie. Um, I remember it had a, a, a tie on it, you know, like for a father, and it said Happy Father's Day. And so we're just like, we just, we just would like to have some peace. And he's, he's not yet fully awake and whatever, so we... We went in there, and it was, you know, it was probably 11 or 11.30. We went in there, and we all stood, and we even put some candles on it, and we all stood beside the bed, and we woke him up, and we said, Happy Father's Day together, and he looked at that cake, and he took it, and he threw it against the wall, and he said, Get out of here, and we all went out of the room crying. <clears throat> all right. But sometimes he was really nice. And that would make up for everything because there were times when he would do stuff like that. He'd feel guilty, and so he'd come back and go do something special. And we're supposed to forget everything. And we're supposed to go, oh, then he is a nice guy, okay? Again, I led him to the Lord before he passed away, and I'm very happy about that. I'm very thankful for that because hell was going to be really hot for that man. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, <laughs> that's right. So, um, when I say, let's see, I said the, the issue with God is not that the fallen kind no longer has any, you know, let me say, read the whole thing. Therefore, we must remember that the issue with God is not that this fallen kind no longer has any good, meaning you've fallen into sin. You are now sinners, therefore there's nothing good about you, because that's not the truth. That is not the truth. There's plenty of good in that tree. There's plenty of good in that tree. <clears throat> All right. But the issue is that if you're not his kind, it doesn't matter. Now that sounds hard-hearted, but it's not. God wanted us. It was never a rejection on his part. He, we're the one who changed kind, you know. And he's the one who has worked to get us back to that, <clears throat> all right, and died for it so that so that, that could be the case. <clears throat> all right. Um, so, when we, so when we think of this chart up here, this... One side being the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the other one being the, the tree of life. <clears throat> we think about the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that is going to be, <clears throat> you could say it like this, that's going to be good and evil. 
Or you could say it, that whatever fruit comes off of that tree is going to be the fruit of that kind. Anybody see the, I mean, I'm, I, you know, we could say the fruit is good and evil. We could say that, okay? That's one way of looking at it. Or we could say whatever it is, it's from the kind that that tree is. Does, does that make sense? Okay, good. Because, because we get all wrapped up in logistics and stuff. I mean, and this is great that we can even acknowledge this here. You know, if, if indeed we are, <laughs> but it's great that we can. But I'll tell you what, it gets harder in real life. Yeah, exactly. It gets a lot harder, but you know why? Because we are, and I'm, you know, I'm just, so I'm, it's just the truth. We're so much the, tr the knowledge of good and evil that when, when we meet somebody and they look good and they act good and they're real kind and everything, we assume that's what they are. And they may be, you know, you ever, anybody ever seen it where they found some of these, uh, you know, uh, serial killers or child molesters? Or recently they had some guy that had a couple of girls that he kidnapped from kids and, you know, just terrible abuse and stuff like that. And when they catch him, all the neighbors go, oh, you seem like a nice guy to me. <laughs> well, yeah, I hear that all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, he just seemed like, he was quiet, but he was just seemed like a really nice guy, you know? And I'm thinking, I'm staying away from nice guys there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> However, does it really matter if it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what that person chooses to emphasize off of that tree? Because there's some people just don't care. I mean, they don't care if you like them or don't like them. They don't care if you, you know what I mean? They don't care if they walk over the top of you. And we go, oh, that person, you know, by this square here, that's the, that's the evil for that person. They're bad. I, I hate mean people, you know. I hate mean people. But then somebody is just so easy to get along. They're just sweet and nice but it's off of the same tree, but we treat them completely different. Because why? Well, wouldn't you, I mean, would you agree with me that maybe it's because, maybe we haven't seen this thing for what it is, this tree, this kind. Maybe we've only seen it sort of as, let, let's categorize it the way we were doing it the first. Let's characterize it as sin, they're sinners or people that do wrong. But you know, I, you know, it, it's like this. Well, you know, I've known some sinners and they were bad, but I've known some sinners and they were really good people. You know, I'll tell you this, you probably think I'm crazy. I know some sinners that act better than a lot of Christians that I know. And they don't even claim Jesus, <laughs> you know? Okay, so what are the chances of being deceived in this sort of situation? <laughs> I mean, the odds are really, really against us unless God gives us a view of this, not just in some class, because this will melt away, trust me. This teaching and talking, Randy again, you know what I mean? I, I know the same thing. I ha if you have to listen to it, I have to hear it too, okay? But it just melts away. There has to come a place where we go, Lord, my God, I just want my heart and life to be focused on you, and I want to go after you. And if something is, like, um, alarming in a, you know, I, I will say it like this, alarming in a good way, even though it's alarming. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to, I don't want to ignore original sin. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? I don't, want, I don't want to leave the concept of what really happened there was they ate of this tree and good and evil are off the same tree and it's not God's kind and I don't want to be deceived by people like that by saying, oh, we're all sinners. Well, we're all sinners and we're all, you know, and we all just need forgiveness. You know, sure, I'm still 
eating off of that tree. But we just need to be forgiven. No, we don't. We need to be cut down. Jesus, you know, John the Baptist says, you know, I'm, you know, I'm preaching to you, you know, you're going to go down in water like this. But when he comes, he's going to lay the axe to the root. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, it's, and it is. That's right. That's good, Joan. It really is the only way. I mean, and if, you, and if these sort of things hit you spiritually and you start conceiving them in relationship to yourself, you really say, it's the only way. My God, this thing is horrible. This, uh, the tentacles of the roots of this thing are horrible, but we never see those, do we? We only see the fruit of it. And that's, Jesus cuts it down from the roots. That's what he says. You know, lays the axe to the what? To the roots of the thing. And, and does away with it. All right. Well, don't you think there's a place for the Holy Spirit in this? Do you think there's a place for the Holy Spirit to take what Jesus did 2,000 years ago and apply that same axe to our understanding of these things and cut that thing down so that we never lean in that direction anymore. It, it's, a, it, it's a must. It's, it, it has to happen. Or we're just, gonna, we're just gonna be Christians that are constantly coloring outside of the lines. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, oh, you know, and thinking it's okay, you know, because we take it to our parents and they go, oh my God, that's so good, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what, when is the kid one day going to go, mom, this is horrible, look at this, I am all over the place, <laughs> yes, Kelly. Right. But in reality, most people are not guilty of justifying that it's not after its kind because most Christians don't even have a clue about this kind stuff. You know what I'm saying? They don't. They don't. That's why. Pardon? No, no. The amazing thing I was seeing in this is that the way we're justifying the evil is we've set it up in a th with the good, but we've done it in this theological bubble that, that allows for it. It allows for it. And not, and not even knowingly. I mean, don't, don't you know that if somebody painted a theological picture that didn't require Christ in you or you to be in Christ, that would save you and, and you know you're messed up, that you wouldn't, you know, that's right. You would jump on that. Yeah, Scott? Well, we usually judge it according to how that person affects that person. You know, like what you're saying about the Bible, it's like if you're neighbor is a nice to you, then right. you're, you're good. Right. It's nothing to do with judging after the Spirit. Right. And that's a, that's a good point. Scott, I, I, Scott's saying that if your neighbor is nice to you, then you fall into that, that thing. And, you know, I, I'll tell you a little story about me. Some of you have known me for a good long while, <clears throat> especially that blonde lady over there, the one back there. <clears throat> um, and, you know, when I first started out in the ministry, I just believed the best in everybody. And boy, did I get run over by, you know, it's like being on a freeway and nobody's caring if you're out there, you know. <laughs> and, uh, um, and what happened was, I mean, one or two things either happens, if, especially if you're in the ministry. You don't have to be a pastor, just if you're in the ministry. You either, you either get bitter and hurt and unforgiveness bills and that's just, you know, I always say it's a luxury I can't afford. Because that, there goes your ministry. You're worthless if that happens. You're worthless. You have to get over stuff. You know what I mean? There are no two ways around that. That goes without saying. <clears throat> or, you know, you either get bitter or you find some reality that is greater than all of that. And the reality that I found, because I, I you know, I mean, I'm as human as anybody else. I felt bitterness rising and stuff, and I, you know, and I'm sure I'm not perfectly clean in, in this matter. 
But I cried out because it's kind of like Peter walking on the water and then he's drowning, you know, and he says, save me. You know, Jesus didn't go, you're already saved. <laughs> well, I don't feel like it. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. He reached his hand down when, when I said, save me. And he says, you, you really want to be with me where I'm at instead of getting me down there where you're at. And pulls him up in the boat. Remember that? Anybody remember that? That was, that was real exciting the first couple of weeks that we were into this. Somebody kind of remember that? Yes. He goes, you know what? Yeah, there you go. Good. You, know? <clears throat> you get in Christ instead of Christ in you. Well, that's what he started doing. He started explaining this kind of stuff to me, and he started showing me, you know, this is an issue of kind. You, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like if, like, let me see if I can do this without destroying. Oh, they erased it finally. It was there just a week ago. Um, that little chart that we did, that with all of those different things, and Lindsay helped me put it up there. A million doctrines and a million things and a million angles, and you just go, oh, God, there's so much to this stuff, you know. How am I ever going to get it all, you know? And the Lord just kind of erased the board. And he just put kind, you know. I want one after my kind. And I sent Christ to die to put away the old kind, and I rose from the dead so that you could be in me, part of me, partakers of me, and be after my kind. All right? <clears throat> well, that just got real simple then. It wasn't, a, it wasn't about sins because, again, that's fruit. And it wasn't just about being a sinner because, again, that's, that's not a, a true description of this from God's side. Yeah. But we think it is. You know, because anything we do is not his kind. Therefore, anything we do is sin to him. Yes. All right, now, again, we haven't quite gotten there, but we'll get there. How much time we got? Well, we're almost. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, tell you what, we're, we're going to go ahead and take a break. And uh, because the next one, I've got several scriptures to back up what I've said in this first, first class. And remember when I started, I said probably this class and the next one will be dealing with this bridge before we really get into regeneration. Well, judging from how far I got, probably for the next couple of weeks we'll be, <laughs> we'll be dealing with this. So take a break. <clears throat>